Welcome back to AM Northwest. Our first guests are known worldwide for their research on love and relationships. Their latest book will help couples turn conflict into connection. We welcome back co-founders of the Gottman Institute and authors of the all-new Fight Right, Dr. Julie Schwartz Gottman and Dr. John Gottman, Portlanders. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Great to see you in person. You're married. I was just asking you before we went on the air. You're married 36 years. Is that That's right? That's right. Wow. That's right, Helen. And didn't you meet at a coffee shop in Seattle? We did. We did. <laughs> Actually, I was going to a party. John was hanging out. Uh -huh. Both of us had just moved to Seattle. He got there. He was in line for coffee. Right. Then I came. Didn't know him. Yes. Didn't know that he was already famous. So he asked me, would I like to have coffee with him? Uh -huh. Absolutely, <laughs> because he looked really cute. Right. <laughs> like an urban intellectual. Uh -huh. And that's your type, an urban intellectual. He still intellectual. does. Yeah. That's my type. Yeah. It's Helen. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just love it. So let's talk about fight right, because you do believe that couples should fight, right, at times. Mm -hmm. But there's a way to fight, and there are different types of fights, and different types of fighters. Right. Which would you like to start first with? Would it be how people fight? Sure. I, I think one of the things we, we've discovered is that conflict does have a purpose. Right. And the purpose is mutual understanding. And we want to present blueprints in this book that get us to mutual understanding rather than the sort of attack, defend, standoff right. that we see in a lot of relationships. Mm -hmm. Let me add that the reason we're writing this book right now uh, is that we really see most people divided yeah. from one another. There's tremendous polarization yeah. on one end or the other. Right. And people have a terrible time listening to each other. Oh, that's very true. Right? And really trying to understand where the other person is coming from and maybe even validate where that person right. is coming from uh, in terms of, gee, that makes sense to me, even if you don't agree. So in our research, we studied over 3,000 couples, one hundredth of a second by hundredth of a second, to find out what a successful couples do. And we followed them for as long as 20 years. Wow, to that's understand amazing. that, yeah. right. You found out that there are different types of fights, the bomb drop, the flood, the shallows, the standoff, the chasm in the room. Let's start with the bomb drop. Tell me about that kind of fight. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the bomb drop. A lot of people, when they want to bring up a complaint, do so with criticism. Right. So Usually it's when you're at your boiling point, right? Like you, you, mm -hmm. you ignore it for a while? Well, that's possibly true. Oh, you sorry. I was speaking from experience. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I get it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that relate to that. Yeah. Um, so people hold things inside and then finally uh, they ask their partner to sit down and they say to their partner, you know what, I need to tell you that you're a terrible father, you're terrible in bed, and worst of all, you don't recycle. <laughs> 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 and yeah. there's the bomb. Right. So how does the person respond to that? Defensively. Of course. It doesn't work. So how would you suggest <coughs> that couple who's used to doing that kind of fight, how do you mm -hmm. suggest they resolve when it comes to the next fight? What we've seen in couples who we call the masters of relationship, the ones who stay together and more or less like each other over time, yeah. is that instead of pointing their finger at their partner and describing their partner, they point their finger at themselves and say what they feel about a situation, not about a person, and what their positive need is. What, what their positive need is. What they really want. You know? So behind every complaint, there's a longing, there's a hope, a wish. And so the masters are presenting how their partner can shine for them, a kind of recipe right. for what they want. Mm -hmm. you, you talk about you two <coughs> going to a therapist yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> which is the therapist needing a therapist, which I think it makes sense to me. And there was a long time disagreement. You wanted to move to Orcas Island at one point, and you really wanted to be mm. in the city. Well, You're, not quite. Not quite, okay. <clears throat> no, not quite. So what happened is that um, I had grown up in Portland, mm -hmm. and... You live here now, and I which we love, now. reclaiming you. Yay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I lived uh, next to a forest. Yes. I went into that forest all the time. Forest I even Park. slept there, that's wow. right. 
And so uh, when we uh, were in Seattle, I really wanted a refuge, a place where we could go that was in the wilderness. Yeah. So I wanted just a cabin, like a second little cabin. Sure. Uh, and John did not. So. He's more of a city guy. He, he's a city guy, and I can be a city person too, but right. I have you still have to, to have. have. Got it. Yes, that escape. Yeah. That refuge. So we fought about it for six years, and that's when we finally <laughs> hired the therapist. The therapist, Helen, loved John because mm -hmm. he's so cute yeah. and brilliant. <laughs> Not so much me. Uh -huh. I thought and she was a great therapist. Yeah, of course she did. <laughs> Yeah. She was on my side. Yeah. <laughs> Darn tootin'. <laughs> so, um, and she said to John one day, uh, just tell her no. That's fine. Just tell her no. He then left. I left. And he said, do I sound like that? Yeah. And I said, sometimes. Yeah. So we fired the therapist. Yeah. And then yeah. we developed our own method of just asking our partner deep, questions to understand what was Wha underneath, underneath right. their position sure. on the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and we came out of that with much more understanding and compassion for each right. other. And from that, we were able to develop a compromise. So you were able to g get John to understand that you really needed that refuge, that forest. But that why? Mm -hmm. Right. Why? That was the important right. part. Right. And then didn't you ask for something then in return? Because you wanted something positive in return. You asked for something in return. Yeah, I wanted us to keep, keep a kosher home. Right. And that was important to me. So and then so you, it was a compromise. It, yeah, it was a compromise. And also we decided we we get a small house on Orcas Island rather than renting, and we would try it out for a couple of years. And if I still felt negatively about it, we would sell it. So right. that was the deal. But after mm -hmm. a couple of months living in this beautiful place and having it be so quiet, yeah, great <laughs> place to write, you know, and a shared beach where we could kayak. Nice. Uh, you know, it was really wonderful. I, I was sold after a couple of months. I knew he would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about another fight, the f or type of fight, is the flood. Right. So, um, when couples came into a lab for our research, the first thing we did is we hooked them up to some physiological instruments that measured their heart rate, measured their breathing, measured how much their hands perspired, mm -hmm. and some other measures. Um, and then we just sat back, asked them to talk about a conflict for 15 minutes. What we found is that sitting here as calmly as John and I are sitting, some of them would have heart rates that went over 100 beats a minute. Oh, wow. Maybe 150 mm, beats yeah. a minute. Mm -hmm. They were in fight or flight. They were feeling so attacked they couldn't think straight, they couldn't hear accurately right. or interpret. We call that flooding, and it's something that inevitably makes fights worse. Yes. So we created an antidote for that. What is that? The antidote is one person calls for a break. Yeah. You have to take a break, stop on a dime, and say when you'll come back to talk about the same issue right. again. You have to say when you'll come back, otherwise the other person may feel abandoned. Sure. Then you go apart, you do not talk about the fight, you do not even think about the yeah. fight. Because it takes time for your body to calm down. Right. And metabolize those stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, in order to have a calmer state of mind. Right. Then people would come back and it looked like they had a brain transplant. Yeah. They Be actually could talk they again. They could relax, talk a little bit more. So then does that defy the, the old wives tale about never go to bed angry? Maybe sometimes you should stop the argument and then start over the right. next day. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Sometimes it is a good idea to go to bed angry. Yeah. You know, if it's late and you're tired, you know, try to get a good night's sleep and then when you're rested, yeah. talk about and the And sometimes issue. it looks a little different the next day. Yeah, I get exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. the book you know. again is called Fight Right. We you have a book event, and it's a, a virtual event with Brene Brown, right. mm -hmm. and that is Tuesday at four o'clock. There is a pre-registration re 
pre-registration <coughs> required. We're going to put all the information about that on our website at k2.com. Book again is Fight Right. Uh, Julie Schwartz Gottman and John Gottman. Thank you both so much. I hope you come back. Very welcome. Thank you, Thank you so you, much, Helen. Helen. Great time with you. Good. All right, we'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away.